Well, welcome to another GIS Peer Success webinar uh, brought to you by GISSuccess.com. Uh, today's topic is gaining the attention of executives of G for uh, GIS. Uh, thanks everybody for registering and participating. Uh, you guys give us the fuel to keep us going in uh, producing these webinars. Um, every time you do that, we know that we're on track and uh, we're, we're filling a, a, a need and uh, filling the gaps and, and getting you guys from good to great. So thank you again for uh, showing up and participating. Uh, we've got quite a few people online so far. There's uh, 26. Uh, that's great turnout uh, for these. And again, this is also recorded for YouTube. So if you don't catch it here, or if, you don't, if you're not fast enough in writing your notes, you can always catch it on the replay on YouTube. Um, if this, if you're a first timer, uh, and you're not familiar with this whole uh, GIS Success <coughs> webinar. Basically, this is uh, where you know you go to conferences, you go to uh, these tech conferences and or some industry conference, and they talk about GIS and they talk about you know specific things regarding those arenas. But then you end up in the in the hallways or in the expo talking about GIS management and uh, different issues and uh, solutions. And after you leave the conference, you, either that, that conversation putters out or you never get in contact with the person you're talking to. And what we're trying to do here is just continue that conversation, continue those hallway conversations, continue that networking, uh, record these things so that you have reference uh, in the future. And so that's how this all kind of came about. And um, that's the whole premise behind it. And um, <clears throat> For a quick intro, uh, my name is Toby Soto. I am the author, blogger, vlogger of GISSuccess.com. And my goal is to take you from good to great and learning all the different aspects of management and leadership and uh, help provide you content and solutions uh, to get you to that point. And so I've been doing this for a couple of years, really enjoying it. Have some great friends. We got, uh, you know, Wade and, and Tim and, you know, just met Paul recently. And uh, this is just how we just build that network. And uh, I really enjoy this and having these discussions with people like you. So um, go ahead, Wade, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Wade Kluse. I'm the GIS director here at the Utah Department of Natural Resources. Uh, I've really been enjoying this over the last year or so with Toby. Uh, to me, this is kind of just about building the community around uh, GIS management related topics. It's a little bit of a timeout from the technical side of GIS. Um, and that's kind of where I enjoy uh, being these days uh, in my current position. So I enjoy the opportunity to contribute. Go ahead, Tim. Yeah, hi, I'm uh, Tim Nolan. I'm uh, the, a longtime staple of GIS in the North Texas area, and I mean long time. I've been around for a while, so, uh, uh, and I've most recently been involved a lot more in uh, application development, so I spend a lot of my time these days trying to, uh, to blend GIS with app dev and kind of not have it such a great, uh, you know, gray space anymore, but they're all kind of, everybody kind of knows a little bit of everything else. I've really enjoyed uh, these uh, GIS success webinars. We always bring in great guests uh, and I'm really looking forward to uh, hearing what uh, Paul has to say today. Awesome. So a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, we do have chat windows on the side, uh, but make sure that you set it to all panelists and attendees so everyone can see what you're typing and, and uh, <laughs> any questions you may have. Uh, Wade and Tim, they'll kind of be monitoring that chat window too and um, fine uh, in there. So uh, feel free to input whatever you want. If you have questions for us, we're, we'll get to them. You know, we'll uh, read them out and um, you know have it for our guest and for us. Any, anything that you find interesting that you want to comment about, be great. Um, so today's topic is gaining the attention of executives uh, about GIS. It's it's been an issue. Uh, we were at the GIS um, conference, the, the Ezra UC conference, uh, a couple months ago. And uh, we did Tim's uh, lean coffee process, which is you know taking the, the post-it notes and kind of boiling down these topics of interest. And then we have these round table discussions at the uh, GIS managers uh, open summit. And um, at the end of the day, 
they post all those post-its on this whiteboard. And so um, that's like a gold mine for me to take a, a look at those and take pictures and, and find out what are people talking about? What, what are they having issues with? Um, and so the ones that really stood out, we had a, a lot of these, which is actually getting information to your executives, getting their attention. You know, a lot of people were having um, struggles in, in gaining that. And so that also prompted me to create a, a blog post, which was the uh, four C's to boost uh, exposure of GIS. And those four C's was uh, creating the, the connection, being convenient, uh, being consistent and being creative. And um, so, you know, those elements help in gaining the attention of the organization and executives. And when I was at the Esri UC, I sat down with Paul. We, we finally met. Uh, we've been talking online here and there. And uh, we finally met at the UC and sat down and had some great discussions around this uh, digital transformation and uh, communication. And he had some really compelling stories that kind of like went in parallel with some of the things that I had been doing in the past. And so I'm like, I think we need to like address this topic and uh, definitely bring Paul on. Um, so our special guest is Paul uh, J. Rue. He's the Greater Sudbury Utilities Innovation Officer. And um, I could either read his bio or I could just let him do a brief explanation of uh, his background. So let's, let's go that route. You know what? You don't say A as much as I do, so you can read my bio if you want. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in short, I've been in the industry for a long time. Uh, and I guess, you know what I can do? We can just kick into the slides if you want. Okay. And I'm going to do a little bit of an introduction there. So I, I'm a, most of us on this uh, webinar today are very visual. So I'm going to throw up some visuals and we'll see how it goes. All right. Here we go. Everybody see that okay? Looks good. Looks good, all right. So I was asked to attend this webinar, speak a little bit to my story and um, what I call rattling the cage. I've been becoming really good at it. I've made a lot of mistakes doing it and you know, my background, which we'll get into now, um, basically is format for my presentation is going to be, it's going to be bold and simple. And the format's going to follow this. So I'm going to talk about myself soon. Uh, we're going to do a quick poll and I'll give you some disclaimers. Uh, I'm not an expert in anything. And like you, I'm still learning a lot. So we're going to do estimating leadership buy-in and how do we do that? I have some uh, tools to do that. I can assist you and how do we actually get their attention so this is an all too common problem like Toby says I, I just spend a lot of time with other agencies and it's it's a tough one um, no one gets what we do uh, no one gets that we're transforming and we'll talk about that today but, and then here's some things I've tried and I've, I've been really bold I've done some crazy things I've taken risks I've uh, pushed some boundaries so Hopefully you can learn from what I've done, what's worked and what hasn't. And these are all based not just on the things I've tried, but I know my peers are trying. This is not just my story, this is our story. And uh, the common theme for all of it is that culture change actually starts with leadership awareness and geo-literacy. So how do we get uh, leadership aware of things, okay? So about me, I'm bold and simple. Uh, I'm a Canadian boy in a small town. Uh, North of Toronto. And here's a diagram that kind of shows sort of my history. I won't give you all the years, but I've been in the business since the 90s when I graduated as a geographer. And I've been really, really lucky in my career in that um, I've been able to step into innovation in the 90s. There was in this uh, city I live in, there's an advanced technology center. So my first job was working in innovation. I was standing up servers and getting DSL and web servers set up and networking and writing proposals, but also getting into the web GIS game. And back in the 90s, that was like the pioneering days and it was a ton of fun. Um, there was really good products. As we didn't have anything but our Kimpoy, I think at the time. But there were some products that were, were fantastic. So we were using MapGuide uh, Lite and the API uh, was pretty... Um, 
thorough and we could do really cool things. So I was in the web GIS game in the 90s, telecommuting, um, teleconferencing, uh, chat sessions. So I was kind of like voodoo. My, my parents didn't understand how I could work from home and do all this stuff. And it was a lot of fun. And I joined basically uh, local government as a, as a web GIS guy because all the work I was doing, like Tim's doing, is probably a ton of web-based work, uh, application development. And I ended up being a web guy for a long time. That was basically my passion was cutting code and stitching systems together, business systems together uh, with web technologies. And so it wasn't until 2010-ish, that's when I really got in the enterprise GIS game. And being in IT for, for a long time, I already knew what the challenges were. I knew what I was going to get into a little bit with trying to make change in an organization that's relatively large. And within a very short amount of time, and we'll get uh, into that a little bit later, is uh, I basically got in the transformation game. All of us on this call today are in the transformation game. We're not necessarily GIS people. And that's something that's been really exciting for me because of my varied background and varied background of, of all of us is that it's not just making maps, right? For me, it's never been about making maps. It's about web tech and and stitching and gluing data together. So luckily recently I've been able to join uh, this local utility. It's a small organization and they're, excuse me, small organization and they have an innovation policy and they're all about change and trying to figure things out. All of our projects at some level um, incorporate GIS. So what you see on the right is essentially me is for the most part, I've been involved in enterprise. Like, how do we, what is that? And how do we, how do we build an enterprise? But also organizationally, how do we do that? And then it's always been about information and data and the systems that stitch it together. Yes, I did GIS, but I had a very different uh, lens on GIS than everybody else because of, you know, I started on the web side of things in the 90s, right? And now, essentially, what's happened is it's still those three main uh, triangles there are, are key enterprise information systems right so that's the enterprise GIS essentially but what's changing and it's changing rapidly is that GIS part and 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 that's what we're going to talk about today it's changing but how do we get our leadership to understand that we're the ones in charge we're leading the charge we're driving the change and we get all the pieces that fit together and so I call it the glue that's what we do now GIS is the glue for our business system GIS is the glue for better user experiences, right? And so, yes, I'm still a geographer at heart. It's my kind of, that's my roots. Um, but if you look at that, the words on the left, that's essentially what I've grown into and how, you know, basically we should all be looking at ourselves. We're innovators, we're transformers. And so for me though, what really happened was in 2014, I call out my coming of age because that's when I finished, actually finished my master's, which I started in the 90s. So I like to start things uh, as an innovator. Finishing things is a little bit difficult for me. I like to spin it up and walk away from it. So with my master's, same thing. 2014 though, I was lucky enough to do um, a dissertation on trying to measure the organizational impact on our data quality. I, 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 I knew there was something happening organizationally with culture and leadership and understanding and buy-in. And I wanted to document the actual errors of admission in the database. So if the organization didn't get it, how is that gonna impact my data, right? Data is currency. And so in 2014, that's when I basically had that revelation because I, I spent the year studying and, and coming up with a framework in my dissertation. So. Where, what about me now? So where is Paul Giroux, the innovator? So essentially, um, I've been here for a short time, but 2018 has been really good to me. And, you know, meeting people like Wade, Tim, and Toby here has been fantastic. But 2018, I landed my dream job. So I'm back where I started. I'm back in innovation. I'm back to not really having to worry about a title or all the credentials I have behind my name. Those don't really matter anymore. It's my ability to glue things together and make people's jobs easier, right? And so this year, I was lucky enough to be the first Canadian GIS uh, Manager's Open Summit speaker. That's 
the person that spoke from Canada briefly before was Roger Tomlinson. So I, I, I don't think I'm at that level, but it's because of my relationship uh, to Adam Carno and others, right? I've, I've garnered their attention and we're going to talk about how I did that because there's some strategies at play here that uh, deal not just with getting leadership's attention, but the, the upside of that is you get everyone's attention by doing what I'm going to suggest today. And then this week, actually, I managed to be, I got asked to, to be a book reviewer for this. So this is Guardians of the Key. This is a data literacy book for kids. It introduces the concept of the key to children, and it's from Jane Cross. So this is someone who's trying to really change the industry, starting with children, right? So by the time they're leaders, I think they're going to get it, which is a good thing. And so... Yesterday, uh, you may have noticed on Twitter and stuff, I got my first editorial published in the Federal Highway Administration newsletter. So that's something I threw out there last year. I was asked to speak to the enterprise health uh, problem and how do we measure that. So it's been a pretty good week, um, day, obviously today, getting to share my experience with you. And then 2018 has been fantastic. So my goals for 2019 are going to be just take it easy. Like, stop battling, battling the big battles and actually ride the wave and get some really cool stuff done at the uh, utility level. All right, so uh, what do we do? How do we estimate buy-in? So I think at one point we had a poll here. I think I missed that till we, so right. poll two. So why don't we, do I have to give up, relinquish control? All right, Back to you to do the poll. Do poll one actually. All right, so I'm gonna launch the poll. And the poll question is, your leadership support for the enterprise GIS is it's either amazing, adequate, quickly improving, slowly improving, getting worse, uh, a dumpster fire. So I'm going to launch that poll. <laughs> dumpster fire is obviously one of my uh, terms, and you may have seen it on Twitter. So when things aren't going great, you'll see me posting things about a dumpster fire or a tire <laughs> fire. Yeah. They'll smolder for a long time. They do. <laughs> and that's what we're all dealing with is some sort of fire that takes a long time to put out, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we'll just wait a minute here. Let's see what you guys got. Slowly improving is taking the, uh, the lead here. This is good. I bet you two years ago it would have been different. Now, Toby, you're able to share the results, or I don't think we're able to see them right now. Yeah, I think I can. Let me do a uh, screen share. See if that'll do it. All right, can you guys see that? Yeah. Cool. We see your screen, but we don't see the results. You don't see the poll? Mm -mm. Really? No. Oh. Is it on another screen? No, it's on a... Uh... You might have to close it. Hmm. Yeah, I may have to end poll. That's probably why. All right. It looks like everyone's posted, so I'm going to end poll. Mm, share results. There we go. There we go. Everyone see that? Well, we got some amazing. So this is this is good to see, but... The slowly improving thing is, uh, like I said, I bet you a couple of years ago, you would have seen more getting worse. <laughs> the, the tide's changing, and, and I think it's because everybody's buying in now into the concept of digital transformation, and you, you just can't ignore the spatial intelligence stuff at all anymore. So yeah, gonna, I'm going to share, if that's all right. All right. Let me stop sharing here. Tell you. Okay, so we're here. Everybody can see that. Estimating yes. buy-in. Excellent. Okay, so the goal right now is I want to show you. First of all, there are methods uh, to to measure your leadership buy-in, and and maturity modeling is one of those. So at one point we're going to do poll number two, which is a roadblock. So let's actually show you. What is this 
maturity model Slim Jim you may have heard of. It's Creative Commons, it's free, and it's something I threw out there to help people. And it really took off in other places. So this poll just spun up, which is good. So we can go ahead and finish that one, and then I'll kick into uh, maturity modeling while we wait for that. Okay. So this one is, what is your biggest roadblock between you and your leadership? Organizational politics, lack of management champion, leadership perception of GIS, organization does not want to admit, reveal flaws, uh, the lack of a compelling business value message for GIS. Uh, you're not sure the best way to ask for more resources, buy-in from leadership, and all of the above. Okay, so while that, other people are filling out the poll. So this is what uh, maturity model looks like. And I'm a fan of the maturity model for various reasons. Uh, yeah, you wrote been, it. Pardon me? Yeah, you wrote it. I wrote it, yeah. <laughs> but I didn't actually know what was happening with this until it really took seat in the mid-Americas and starting in uh, the state of Iowa. So the state was using this for their entire, all, every agency that was uh, basically using enterprise GIS, it was being measured using this tool. And they were seeing how they can move the GIS program forward across the entire state and across all agencies. So kind of took seed there with this guy, Patrick Wilkie Brown. And then it just expanded out. So now, you know, because I put it out there, I have to help support this thing. So, but it's, it's, it's great. And the reason being is the research shows, here's the factors that actually count. And there's a lot of factors in the maturity model that essentially point out some of the leadership problem or not. You may have a lot of uh, leadership support. So here's just an example of some of them. So the organization has an enterprise GIS management function. So not five, not two, you've got one, right? And then your leadership's actually established uh, that your GIS is authoritative. They're, they're selling the message. And some other ones are management has uh, policies in place for resource allocation management. You're not fighting IT, you're not fighting engineering, planning, whatever divisions you have that are using GIS for resources. You actually, there's resource allocation to align to the right things. Another one's management uh, is measuring the tangible benefits. So there's someone uh, on, on screen right now with a nice yellow shirt weight. And the shirt happens to match this factor, which is good. But <laughs> Wade has an ROI tool. Like it's the tools out there, he's distributing it. It's his contribution to the profession like I am doing with Slim Jim. So are you actually measuring uh, the benefits of your program? And is your senior management learning? So this is a big one. Do the senior management understand and are they learning what enterprise GIS is? Not desktop mapping, right? Not fancy 3D, like we're talking enterprise deep integration study system. And so that factors there and you can estimate and if your leadership is strong, you're gonna get a, a higher score. So a score closer to five. And if your leadership is weak, then you're gonna mark on here that it's lower, right? Other ones are competency. So is the enterprise, is management committed to competency and capacity building at all levels? So they're saying everyone in the organization from the frontline clerks to this, uh, the field crews, they're all becoming kind of geo-literate. And then another one is, is your senior management actually recognizing enterprise GIS as a strategic technology? Do they use it to make decisions or are they just, getting people to compile spreadsheets and make graphs like it's 1990 still, right? And then here's the environment of the organization fosters innovation. That's one that was in there before my innovation job, but I'm glad it's in there. And there is basically is the organization, are they learning? Is there changing continuous improvement uh, accepted? And is it a practice philosophy? So you have an organization that's very uh, astute in tradition, the status quo, or are there, is it, there are inertia issues, or is there actually leadership buy-in? If you're having issues, why not measure it, right? And we'll get into some of those uh, thing, strategies you can uh, tackle. So let's do a few more polls. So the one that just came up, I don't know if you can uh, show results, but essentially it's saying, the biggest roadblock is leadership perception of GIS is maps 
not been data people. Um, mm -hmm. So they're not seeing, you know, obviously as an organizational thing with an enterprise system, they're just seeing it still pretty much the way it's always been. Okay. Hey, Paul, may I interrupt here? Uh, I got a, a quick question from our, uh, from uh, Richard and our audience. Sure. Uh, well, this is this maturity model available. Can we all get a copy of this? Yeah, if you just go to slimjim.info, the website's being uh, torn apart right now. I can show you that actually. I'm just on my other screens in a second here. And like I said, this was my master's dissertation. This is just one small piece of it. And yeah, so if you go slimjim.info, You'll end up here, you go get started and you just fill out the form. So I'm still working on the site. I decided to revamp it, but it, just fill out the form and you'll get a copy of the model and it's free. The reason why it's free shared creative commons is because it's just the best of breed model. There's factors from ERISA, there's factors from principal components analysis from other studies of other enterprise systems. All right, so yes, it's free and it's online. Wade's uh, Wade, your ROI tool is also online, I think, or is it available through LinkedIn and Twitter? Yeah, there's a there's a few uh, links to that uh, that are out there right now. Uh, if you go to my LinkedIn page and uh, see some of the slides I'm sharing, you'll see it there, or just email me, uh, wcluse at utah.gov. We'll yeah, also put it in the uh, show notes too for yeah. YouTube. Okay, but it's great because we have. There's not just, you know, slim to maturity model. Obviously, I'm a fan. Um, but there's, a, there's other maturity models. So you have a maturity model gives you like an overall arching view of the organization. It's your health report. Then you have weights tools. So you start bringing all these tools together, and now you really have a package of, of things to manage your, your system better. Can you see my poll results when I have it here? No. No. Okay. All right, so we're gonna do, these are gonna be quick polls. So what we're gonna do is actually try to use some of the factors, okay? So Toby's gonna show the next four polls and they're gonna be relatively quick. So please fill those out. And these are, you're basically gauging maturity. So with the four of them, we might get a good picture, but essentially uh, senior management is learning, right? Is GIS and spatial data, is it authoritative? Or do you have to go to a division using Bentley MicroStation or, oh, I just dropped out here. Hold on a sec. So the current uh, poll yeah. up is senior management are interested in and actively learning how enterprise GIS opportunities can help realize improvements to their core business. Leave it up for 10 more seconds. Okay. You guys? And then I'm going to share. Okay. All right. There we go. You guys back up? Yeah, we're good. Okay. All right. So there's your results. Somewhat. Somewhat. Senior management interested in and actively learning. So somewhat is, you know, it probably it's a corporate thing, but it's not an enterprise level of maturity. So we'll do another one. So the next one is GIS and spatial data is authoritative. I think you have next, Toby. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So GIS has been established by upper management as the authoritative source of spatial data and recognized as a critical component of business systems. And if you want to, we can skip the next two polls. Just keep things moving along. All right. I got to get to some strategies on how we're going to get some attention. Right. Hopefully, there's leaders out there watching, and maybe we'll get their attention today. So that. Be... <laughs> Watch a webinar. <laughs> the Watch a webinar. <laughs> <laughs> there's this guy that lives in the same town where Letty Letter Kenny's being filmed. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, so end poll there, and we will share results. Yep. There you go. One is somewhat. So GIS has been established by upper management as authoritative. So we're not there yet. Next. Two. Right. 
And we're like doing lots of polls today because I like polls. Environment of the organization fosters innovation. So learning, change, continuous improvement is an accepted and practiced philosophy. I'm going to say to a great extent where I am, just to let everybody know. It's kind of telling you who I'm voting for, right? This goes into that consistency. Yeah. You got to be consistent with your message. Okay. So as those polls are going through, I'm going to get to the next one. This is my all time favorite slide. So when I meet with senior managers, oh, here we go. Learning change and continuous somewhat. And so averaged out, right? You have some people that actually have a, a to a great extent, which is good. So here, what does inertia feel like? So we got, went through the poll, we got somewhat. So we have a lot of listeners out there that probably feel less. This is inertia. Um, I use this slide with senior managers all the time. One presentation I did a couple of years ago, I literally sh showed this slide, I think, six times. And the reason being is this. The Lamborghini at the bottom, that's your enterprise GIS. That's RTS online. That's the entire platform, your location platform. That's the web GIS pattern. And that's everything you can do with it, right? In the front, that's your, that's your business intelligence and your analytics platforms. And so organizations are jumping on these things and, and leaders think they understand and they want to go, yeah, let's buy these things. So they have sports cars and they think everyone's going to race to the finish line and transform. And the issue is they don't understand what, what they're purchasing or what they're allowing to go through like an enterprise license agreement. They don't know what they're getting in actuality. And you may have race car drivers in your organization, but unfortunately your organization it could be like a flock of sheep, right? They're just there in the way and you're not moving and you're not able to actually leverage all this cool technology you have in place. And so 15 years later, you can still be there and not really nudging yourself forward very much. And so here's the result of one of the polls. Committed to competence and capacity building. So very little. This is an interesting, and they're somewhat. So not a lot of the organizations out there really have enterprise organizational commitment to build confidence and capacity. That's your, we have people that can make maps. Great, we're not making maps anymore. We're data people and we're building apps, right? So how do you get the organization and the workforce moving forward? And so on the next slide is uh, inertia. Well, what happens when you have inertia and you're trying to get attention? And um, you need to basically rattle the cage. And so what I've done is uh, I, I've tried several things. I'm going to show you some of those things. But essentially, it's all the things that we're all struggling with at the moment, which is what is the spatial stuff? What is this GIS stuff? How do we raise awareness at the leadership level and get their buy-in in the major changes that have to happen to keep up and adapt to what's, what's available? And so what hey, we're going to do is I'm going to flip over to Visio because I'm a Visio junkie. All right. Any questions there? No, I was just going to say that your presentation wasn't uh, flipping through. So. Yeah, no, I'm just, I'm just hanging out here. Okay. And it's coming. Here we go. So here's your organization. That's a large organization. I'm going to show you mine right now where I am, essentially. That's how it is. Right? We, we can't see it, Paul. Oh. Yeah, I can't see it. Can't I think see you're hung up. Nope. How about now? No, we only see the uh, PowerPoint uh, setup. Oh, that's what's going on. How about now? Okay. Nope. No, nope. right? I'm going to stop sharing and we'll try it again. It's because my uh, network dropped out for a second there. My laptop was sleepy. It's the afternoon here. Yeah, play my tea. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You see the monkey? There we go. Yeah. That's my portrait. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, what happened? So, Okay, you guys can see that. Here's some dots, yes. right? Here's a visio. This is an organization. You got a leader at the top. You have leadership in there. You got a bunch of managers. In some places that's super fat. Like there's just so much leadership you got to get through. And the organization, for instance, I'm in, I'm lucky to be in an organization with 130 people. So 
it's the reporting structure is like that. I'm straight up to the president. And so there's no inertia, but let's go back to this. You can see that fine, everyone. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So this is you. You're trying to spread the GIS love, right? <laughs> and how do you do, how do you get their attention at the top? Well, there's a problem here. So if you have an organization that's very myopic and insular, how do you get the new way, the new understanding about enterprise and the, how mission critical the system is? How do you get that moved up here? How do you get the love through all these tiers of management, for instance, right? Well, in a place that's a little bit, under, have a, a broader understanding of what the realities of enterprise means, you might get more of a pipeline up through leadership. You see? Okay. Unfortunately, what we're talking about today is a lot of you are having this issue. Like by the time you have your idea or you're trying to raise some awareness or you're trying to get leadership buy-in and get their attention, if each of these dots represents six months to work its way through the inertia of a larger organization, it's, it's very difficult, correct? The other problem too is, and what we're talking about is this thing is called a technological frame. And so I'll be really quick on this. Sorry, I'm just flipping. There's a paper, can you guys see this? Okay, this, this, is, this paper had one of the biggest impacts on the way I treat change. And this is a paper from 1993. Te this is technological frames and it's this Orlikowski and Gash. And they looked at back then, the major transformation was away from paper and faxes onto a thing called like Lotus Notes, I think it was. That was collaboration, that was email, that was going digital. That was the first major transformation, right? And they get in there about the psychological challenges, the, the, the people's cognitive ability to understand the new way. So people in IT launching these things had a very large technological frame. They had to understand the full stack. But people in the organization have a very narrow technological frame and it was very diff difficult to get their frame brought up to where the technology had moved to. We're in the same place in GIS. And so what happens is if you have this technological frame, for instance, where you should know, can you guys see that here? Enterprise GIS, right? If that's your technological frame and you're trying to get the leadership to understand the complexity of each of those four buckets, they're probably still thinking of this. A lot of organizations are thinking here, right? They're stuck in the corner of the G. They're down there and they understand maps. A lot of the people selling the message to your leadership, right? So the people above you may actually still relate to GIS as maps, paper maps. They don't understand that it's a critical business system. Or if they do think they understand the buzzwords, they don't have the frame of reference that we have. And that's what becomes a challenge is this now. So you get, let's replace that one person in the org chart Okay. And you throw someone in the leadership that has a very narrow technological frame. And what happens is, da, da, da. see the squeeze that happened? <laughs> There's no gaps. So you as an enterprise GIS professional have no way of getting your message through as, a, as an expert in your field, with a, you have a very large technological frame, it's, there's a block here, right? So how do you do that when you have potentially even two or three of these people selling the message up to senior leadership, but the message is all about the old way. Their frame is very narrow, very 90s, it's a map. And so they're speaking for basically our profession. So you could have people in accounting, planning, engineering, speaking for something that we actually have a thorough understanding. So how do you get your messages around here, right? The first thing you want to do, and this is, these are just suggestions, tons of things I've tried, but let's do the first one. Okay. We talked about it briefly. So 
here you have, first of all, create a report card, okay? Measure your maturity. Your maturity, say using Slim Dim or Eurysis model, will break down basically where some of those issues are and show the report card to the parents. Like, say, here you go, we got a D and an F. And it starts to drag them into the realities of the, the situation. But again, how do you get their attention? The report card might not be enough, especially if leadership has been telling everyone how great GIS is and how everything's going fine, right? They may not want to look at their report card. So that one may not work. All right, let's delete that one. So maturity modeling is a first step. So the next thing you can do is, and what we learned at the GIS Manager Summit is essentially do cool stuff, okay? So you're gonna do some cool stuff, contrary to what we believe in, which is let's do some mission critical, like a whole workflow where you can collect data with survey one, two, three, and it goes in the database and all this stuff happens. We learned at the GIS Manager Summit, you simply have to do something cool and the leadership will end up getting excited about it. So that's the next strategy, right? How do you get their attention? I think it was Cobb County was saying they had a, was it a GIS intern that threw some story map out about craft brewery tour or something? Yeah. That's what really got their elected officials attention and GIS to cough because they said, what's this thing? And it wasn't the map that they thought it was. It stretched their technological frame, their, their understanding of GIS into that web world, right? And that opened the door. So that, got rid of this a little bit and created some space in between to get the GIS love up, right? But they ended up doing it in a very unique way. And I'm gonna talk about that in a second, which is they had to go out and in, okay? So if that doesn't work and you're trying to do it all through your internal channels, you're bragging, you're trying to see if this stuff sticks, that's not working. Here's another strategy that I think you should try. So pull them down. So I tried this, so essentially, what you want to do is this, there's a roadblock here, right? Because of the, the narrow frame, the frame is just, they're not getting the right information passed up. Try to pull these people down, the leaders into information sessions, engage them, train them. That's a great one. Have, have any of you on the way anybody else tried that? Actually do information sessions to executives. Uh, we, we brought, uh, in the last two years, I'm in IT, so our CIO and our assistant director of IT, both uh, were at the Esri conference last year for the first time. Yeah. So they were able to kind of witness their own sessions. and uh, But yeah, we haven't really done as much of that internally as maybe we should. Right. Okay. And I know we're getting short on time, so we're going to keep plowing ahead. Another one is this. So again, you're trying to internally, you're still trying to do stuff. And just like you mentioned was you, you managed to get your executive to a user conference in San Diego. They're going to learn so much there. That's awesome. But you can bring in Esri to do executive engagement sessions. Mm -hmm. Then it's not you guys barking at leadership to try to get attention. Sometimes leadership wants to pay someone that may even have less skills than you, but they have to pay a consultant to come in to get an engagement session. And then at companies like Esri and other consultants will do that for you. But that's a good one because now it should be intimate. It should be just your top executive in a room where they feel safe to ask questions without their subordinates there, you know, and they're like listening to the conversation. It should be the top managers there getting the information they need from the right people. And then finally, when that's failing, is this thing here. So now you're having trouble. You've tried all those things. Split your brand. And this is one axiom I had in the manifesto I'm working on. We're GIS professionals with a professional obligation to share our knowledge with our community. So what you do is you split yourself away from your organization when you're struggling and you brand yourself as that GIS professional. Tim Nolan is a brand. He's a, he's, he's a phenom. We know what he is. He's an <laughs> agent. We know that, right? Toby's a brand. Wade's a brand and they're doing things and, and contributing and sharing because you know what, with the, with knowledge comes a burden of responsibility. We have to share that. So split your brand and here comes the fun stuff. This is the stuff that I just, I take great pleasure in doing. 
I haven't had to do it much here because the whole organization here gets where, where I'm trying to go. So here's an axiom, go out and in, okay? You have a professional obligation. So what does that mean? Let's go back to our diagram quickly and then I'm almost done for today. So you have this barrier above you, this, this technological frame. They don't understand the enterprise way and it, things will drag on. You're stuck in this flock of sheep and you got the sports car. And so out and in means quite frankly this, when you do your personal brand, outside of the organization, you get to brag about the stuff you're doing as a professional and you can launch knowledge and cool grenades over that wall on top of the executive level, okay? You throw stuff on Twitter, you throw stuff on LinkedIn, the right executives in your organization have know a little bit about digital, they're on those platforms and they're gonna start seeing some of this stuff. It might be one out of 100 tweets, but you just start launching grenades. So the organization starts talking dashboards, take the five minutes in RTS online, build a dashboard and uh, operations dashboard, take a screenshot, launch it over the wall. That'll kill 200 of their meetings talking about what they're gonna do for the next two years. Cause you can just say, look what I did during a commercial. I was watching the bachelorette with my wife and I built a dashboard that you're talking about, right? That starts squashing this stuff. If this is buffoonery, you start killing that stuff, right? And then finally, a whole bunch of things and I'll zoom in for your time and finish up, but essentially this, okay. I didn't make fancy slides, obviously get invited to speak at conferences. Don't ask for approval. Just do it. So I kept talking to my vendor and go, can I talk? Can I talk? Can I talk? Can I talk? Because when you get on the agenda, it's hard for your organizations to say no, because you're an invited speaker, right? So now you're out and in. Next, write articles, blogs. For instance, I got into ARC user. I circumvented all our processes. I stayed away from communications. I did all this work and then I launched that ARC user article back up, right? Saying, we're experts. This is what Enterprise GIS is. Why don't you buy into this stuff, right? And then finally, um, like I said, when you hear about inertia, when you know something's headed down the wrong road because they're going to do their 20 meetings of hours and hours of the wrong people in the room. All you need to do is blast up those, those grenades. So essentially let's look at some of those. Twitter, LinkedIn, those are my favorite, right? Arc user, speak at user conferences. There's your grenades. Fill those things with knowledge. Be respectful. Like don't be all like, I hate the where I work. No, because you're trying <laughs> to make change and you love your workplace and you love GIS, so take your grenades, launch them over the wall, and hopefully they'll start making changes in your leadership. Not everybody needs to do that, but that was from my experience and talking to my peers, a lot of my peers. That's exact, exactly what you have to do is you gotta blast, I call them grenades of knowledge, grenades of information, grenades of screenshots, look at what we're doing, right? And if, because, it's passive, but your leaders are on these platforms and all of a sudden now they're consuming stuff. Some organizations you can send an email to leadership. You're, you may never get a response. You may never know if they even hear it right. But this way here, you start seeing executives, the people at the top liking your tweets or liking things on LinkedIn. That's a message to you that they're starting to listen. You're getting their attention, right? So those are those knowledge grenades. Obviously, like I said, you got to be nice about it. And then most importantly, you got to do the work though. Like you have to learn the platforms that you own and you got to dig in and learn them, use them so you can start building proof of concepts. Is it risky though to go out and in? Yes. Some organizations are very adverse to uh, you speaking out. That goes against what's being told uh, in this little red box. The message is, GIS is great, we're doing awesome, and all they're producing is PDF maps still. And if you're launching all this cool stuff over the boundary, that's gonna cause a little bit of friction. You're gonna be bumping the sheep. So as GIS people, that's the last slide, and I'll jump right into that. You guys can see that one again, my portrait? But you gotta rattle a cage is what I'm saying. Change agents have to step outside uh, the status quo, and we gotta be very comfortable managing the friction 
you're going to be doing things and you're actually going to be looking down on leadership a lot because you're going to be like, how do I get them to understand this? Like it's 2018. Why are we doing GIS? Like we're doing it in 1996 or something. Right. And so there's, if you Google this article, it's going to give you an example and, it, and it's going to be depressing, but it's also going to boost uh, your morale a bit because we're all in the same boat right now. So if you're trying to make change, you're a change agent. There's some hard numbers in there about it's a thankless job, right? It's a really tough job. So be ready to have someone else take the credit at the end of the day. You trigger the change, you bump the sheep, and you get that car going. That's your job. Whoever wins the race, it doesn't matter, right? You got the sheep out of the way. And so it's pretty thankless to be a change engine, but you can use these tactics and adapt, and you'll start seeing it on your scorecards too as you start getting their attention, right? So lunch cool grenades, work hard and launch them over the wall, back down on top of your executive, the people you have trouble to get their attention. And then the really cool thing though, and what I ended up learning was because I was so getting out there and I had really good connections, like with the Tobys and the Tims and Adam Carnow, Eric Abrams and the Federal Highway Administration is, because you're do launching all these cool grenades and your, your target is actually, you know, to help people, but also to nudge your leadership forward a little bit. The rest of the profession is looking at you. The other agencies out there are saying, oh my gosh, this guy's fantastic, right? Or this gal's doing a great job. Why don't we actually take advantage of that skill set? And so there's other people that get it out there. So that's where when the, the organization is really inert and you're really struggling with leadership and all these things you're trying isn't working, it's going to work for in your favor at the end of the day, right? You're making those contributions. So don't be a timid. Like we're in, a, in an age where we have to be um, assertive. We're the transformers. We're the people making the big changes. And so it's also our professional obligation. As a GIS professional, an IT professional, we got to share. So get stuff out there and don't worry too much about the organization as long as you're phrasing it the right way, which is, Hey, Tim, look at what I'm working on. That's really cool. Or, hey, Wade, your ROI model is fantastic. Like, I'm going to use it, use it for work. Now your work knows you're doing ROI, right? Whereas sending an email may just fall on deaf ears, but on Twitter, elected officials may see it. Other things may happen. So anyways, that's kind of my spiel, which is launch those grenades, right? Try first with a report card. Try to get them to look in the mirror. And if that doesn't work, pull them into engagement sessions. Try to get them aware. If it's still not working, time to get bold and just blast those grenades out. All right. That was really good. Really good, good. Paul. Yeah, I just wanted to make a couple of comments there is that, you know, not everybody is on social media. Know, and so you have some great points there that if you don't have a large following or you don't have a presence on social media, you can still write a blog post. You can still post that to Medium. You can still post that to um, to Esri's Arc user online um, you know, article submission. Uh, there's a lot of places uh, that you can submit those kinds of things and uh, get a lot of traction, a lot of feedback from that. So you don't always have to have that that social media presence. I mean, it definitely helps. Don't, don't, don't by all means. Um, that's going to be your fastest pipeline is by having that social media, by having that network, and just by like what Paul was saying, by accessing um, you know people from Esri, accessing people that have blog sites, people that have um, you know GISSuccess.com, you know all these other different uh, network people that are online that they can repost your stuff or like it and uh, it gains a huge amount of momentum and it goes really far and it goes really deep. So I just wanted to put that in there. Yeah. And, and the way I phrased it today, it's kind of a last resort. Like you should be using social media, whatever flavor you like, just because you should be sharing as a professional and, and cause we can't be in the same room all the time. So this is a great way to share, right? Mm -hmm. What I what I gave you today is, is a, a strategy when things are really tough, right? And so you got to use social media to your advantage, and it's it, it's it is passive and aggressive, as uh, as Wade said. So yes. So Paul, I've got a question for you. Sure. So your um, 
uh, out than in strategy. You obviously created a persona for yourself out there and you recently changed jobs. How did all your social media and your other persona there uh, separate from your organization, your old organization, how did that affect you moving into uh, your new job or how did it help you get that job or get leadership to even accept that, well, if we hire this guy, we're hiring this attitude, this perspective. How did that uh, work out for you? Uh, obviously it's worked out well. And the reason being is in the innovation office to make change, um, you, you need someone that can kind of just rattle the cage and get things done right. And so the way I managed to do it on social media it, it took me a few mistakes. It took me like pulling things off because I, I shouldn't have tweeted a certain way or whatever. But I mean, we got to learn, right? But what they saw was an expert trying things, experimenting, failing, and 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 that's what the, our officially accepted uh, innovation policy is all about. And so it was a perfect fit, right? So they recognize that an innovation officer in, in my organization uh, is required to understand GIS and SCADA and BI and data integrations and all that stuff and know how to leverage all sorts of technology to help engage both in my, my coworkers and engage people in the community because we're trying to push a lot of things forward across uh, the community where we serve. Good. Glad that worked out for you. <laughs> it's a neat story. I think it, it really underscores the message that you're sending. And that is if you do a really good job, you could be paving the way to your next job that looks more like the job you wish you had. Exactly, yeah. And, and the places I've worked too, they're all really good places. They're good people. I mean, I don't want anybody to get that impression. It's, it's the speed, right? So we have this exponential growth in technology. And if your organization is growing logarithmically, which I, I talked about at GIS Manager Summit, that, that's, I, I can't handle that, that, that pace. So I need to be in a place where it's smaller, same challenges, just less people and uh, more apt to, to make the changes. So yes, it's, it's quite exciting. Yeah, you definitely made uh, some huge strides there, Paul, and uh, it's definitely well documented on the internet too on, on what you're doing. So, uh, great job, great job. Really appreciate it. And keep your eye out because we're going to be blasting so much stuff for out there. I, I'm going to continue on, but in a, as a success story. So, before we had to split the brand, and I guess that's a good news, good good, good news story. To do that, it was it was very like throw grenades, whereas. You know, in organizations that have the culture of change and, and innovation, Enterprise GIS is, is foundational and everybody gets that. I, I get to reattach my brand, right? So you're going to see Gio Giroux and all my million other Twitter accounts, which you don't even know about because there's some really loud ones out there. All of those Twitter <laughs> accounts, now they're going to go pretty dormant because I'm going to be tweeting from the organization where they're, they're actually encouraging me to share the story of what's happening in the workshop, which is... Uh, where I, the name of the innovation space I'm in. So it's, it, it's, a good, it's a good story. And I think we're all going to get there. We're all getting recognized because it's just a matter of time. Um, but you're still some organizations, it's going to be two to five years of not really understanding what can be done, right? It's, so let's all brag about what we're doing because it'll raise some awareness of uh, what other neighboring uh, organizations are doing. And organizations are competitive so that the leaders know their neighbors doing something awesome it's it could be a little bit of a, a poke so with all this great stuff that you're doing all this future stuff that's going to be happening what is the best way for people to follow you um there <laughs> let's see what twitter account no so there is a gsu workshop account and then geo geo Giroux, i'll retweet right there's a Slim Jim Twitter account, so if you want to keep track of what's happening with the maturity modeling, especially in the U.S. right now, um, there is a, uh, a Slim Jim GIS Twitter account. Okay. Cool. Well, we'll definitely have that in the show notes so everyone can know how the, all that's spelled. And, and um, you also have, like, Instagram accounts, too. And uh, nope, no Instagram. Oh, Instagram. Um, I like pictures, but I, I like to throw words in there because sometimes you gotta you gotta phrase things with barbs in it so that 
he gets out there and he hooks into the right people. It's harder with a picture, and and uh, the only pictures I have, I usually have some sort of dress up stuff going on. So, uh oh, yeah. <laughs> don't want to go into that arena. No, no. Anyways, that's great. I really appreciate it, Paul. Thank you again for the uh, great presentation. Uh, value bombs galore, without a doubt. <laughs> and uh, we'll try to summarize that in the show notes as well, so that everybody can uh, see all those great uh, items that you've presented. Uh, so thank you everybody for attending. Thanks, Wade. Thanks, Tim. Appreciate all your help and support. Um, this has been another episode of GIS Peer Success Webinar. Uh, if you want to be notified of future webinars, go to GISsuccess.com. Uh, go ahead and uh, subscribe to the newsletter. That will let you know what's up and coming in addition to a lot of other great uh, things that are happening with GISsuccess.com. And uh, if there's some topics that are of interest to you, definitely let us know. You can email me at munigovguy at gmail.com or hit me up on LinkedIn. You know I'm there. So um, great, everybody. Thanks again. Have a great day. And I uh, hope all this kind of sinks in and uh, helps provide you direction to help uh, get this information out to your leadership. All right, everybody. Have a good one. Bye -bye. Thanks, guys. Thanks.